In this video, you will learn how to determine the primary trigonometric ratios for any angle, specifically those angles that are greater than 90 degrees. Let's get started with a coordinate plane. And I'll create a rotation angle in the first quadrant called theta. And if I drop the vertical, then I can label the three sides of this right triangle as the hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent sides. And you know from your previous studies of trigonometry that each of the primary trig ratios is a comparison of two of these three sides. Okay, so that's, that's nothing new. Now what we're going to do now is replace hypotenuse opposite and adjacent with r, y, and x. And these actually should make sense because x, after all, we're on the coordinate plane. This is the x direction. This is the y direction. Uh, r might be new, but you can think of r as representing radius, right? The radius of a circle that would be created if you were to take this terminal arm and sort of uh, rotate it around about the origin, okay? Now, of course, if we're going to switch up hypotenuse opposite and adjacent for uh, r, y, and x, then, of course, our definitions of the primary trig ratios will be uh, different as well, right? So our new opposite over hypotenuse, for example, will now be y over r. Our new uh, opposite over adjacent for tan will now be y over x. Okay, now it turns out that we're going to define sine, cos, and tan this way for all four quadrants. Okay, so um, this, this here doesn't change, right? Sine is still y over r, cos is always x over r, and tan is y over x. What does change, however, would be the signs of each of these three parameters, right? So x, for example, in the second quadrant, and in the third for that matter, will be negative. Why? Because we're to the left of the y-axis. y in the second quadrant will be positive, and I should mention that r will always be positive regardless of which quadrant you're in. Okay, so if you want to know what the sine, cos, and tan of theta is, and now keep in mind in the second quadrant theta is now greater than 90 degrees, all you have to do is consider what the definitions are of each of those ratios. Oh, you want to figure out cosine of 100 degrees? Okay, well then you would just figure out what the x value is, right, for the terminal arm at 100 degrees, and figure out what the height of this triangle would be. Uh, sorry, not the height, uh, figure out the hypotenuse, and then you can just divide the two. Okay, in the third quadrant, it's no different. Now we're working with angles between 180 degrees and 270 degrees. Okay, the definitions remain the same. In the fourth quadrant, Still the same, uh, except now x is positive, y is negative, and again, r is always positive. So let's do this with a very specific example. So let's say we have a terminal arm that passes through the point 3, 4. And uh, if that's the case, and I drop the vertical, then I have a right triangle whose dimensions would be base 3, height 4. And I can easily use Pythagorean theorem to determine the length of the hypotenuse, or the r value. And uh, here in my calculations, to go from r squared to r, of course you square root, and it's always going to be the principal square root, so it's always positive. Okay, now, I'm, now that I know all three sides, I can take the proper two sides, whichever two sides I need to take, and divide them so that my ratios are now 4 over 5, 3 over 5, and 4 over 3 for sine, cos, and tan respectively. And this would be the sine, cos, and tan of this angle here in the first quadrant. Notice that they're all positive. Okay, if I swing over into the second quadrant, there's my definition, uh, or my definitions of sine, cos, and tan. Again, I will use uh, a similar example, except this time instead of 3, 4, uh, the terminal arm passes through negative 3, 4. Drop the vertical, those are my sides. Now it's important to remember here that I'm dealing with this theta. I want to know what sine of this angle is. Let's say this angle is 100 degrees. So I want to know what the sine, cos, and tan of 100 degrees is. How would I figure that out? Well, you would apply the definitions y over r, x over r, and y over x, okay, after you get the three sides. And the three sides again are easy because uh, according to the point that you pass through, that will give you two of the, two of the sides. Right, the point will give you the base and the height, and then you use Pythagorean theorem to determine the radius, or the hypotenuse in this case. Okay. Okay, moving into quadrant number three, we've got the same definitions. 
I'll use a similar example, except this time we're to the left of the y-axis and below the x-axis, so it passes through, the terminal arm passes through negative 3, negative 4. See, another way that you can think about this is, if I were to actually try to figure out the opposite side to this angle, which might be, oh, I don't know, 240 degrees, that would be very difficult because there's no opposite side. This angle isn't even contained within a triangle. Right? This angle here, this angle here doesn't have a hypotenuse, it doesn't have an opposite side, it doesn't have an adjacent side. Okay? But what this angle does have is a reference angle right in here that is contained within a triangle that does have an opposite side and a hypotenuse. So the opposite side is negative 4, the hypotenuse is 5, and that is precisely what sine theta is. Right? So you can think about it that way. Right? So uh, what I'm trying to show you here is that you should think about sine, cos, and tan in terms of um, these expressions, y over r, x over r, and y over x. So in addition to that, you can also think of it as the sine, cos, and tan of any angle is simply the sine, the opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent uh, for the reference angle. Okay. And finally, in the fourth quadrant, we have a similar story. Uh, we've got a terminal arm passing through 3, negative 4. Those are the three lengths. And sine would be opposite negative 4 over hypotenuse 5. Um, adjacent side is 3, hypotenuse is 5, so cosine is 3 fifths, and tan is negative 4 over 3. Okay, and you'll notice here that only cosine is positive, whereas in the third quadrant, only tan is positive. And in the second quadrant, only sine is positive. And I think I pointed out earlier that all of them, all of them, where are we here? All of them are positive in quadrant 1. And that's the end of the video.